Yeah. She's a beaut, Clark. This, uh, this jewel showed up. Um, every now and then people show up here, want to sell me something with an LS in it. And yes, I, I buy them. I have a problem. I go to meetings on Tuesdays. It's LS Anonymous. Um, but I think this one definitely takes the cake. And yes, it showed up just like this. Okay, that went pretty fast. Evidently, after the crash, they left all the bolts loose on the fenders when they tried to replace them. So that helped me out a lot. Now we'll start taking all the air box off, all these extra hoses. We're not gonna keep any of that, so we'll just cut it, throw it away. Stay tuned. Okay. Next, we're going to get into the fuse box and the wiring harness. If you're going to keep the wiring harness for your LS swap, don't get in here and just cut all these. You can actually flip this tab here. Well, that was a neat feature. Pull these two tabs apart here, and you can flip this over to use seven millimeter socket and take all these plugs out. I'll show you after I get them broke loose. Okay, we got all the plugs loose from the fuse box. Now, we got the harness that we're going to save. Now we need to get the computer off, which is again, two seven millimeter bolts holding it to the actual brains. All right, hang on, we'll get it. Okay, we got that off. And you can see the color coding on the plugs. When you look at the computer itself, See, it says green on that side. It says blue on that side. Now there is also a red. I don't remember exactly what years those are. I can look it up and put it below. But you gotta make sure your harness matches the computer. Unless you're using something like the Holly Terminator or Fitech or some kind of aftermarket like the Fast system. If you're using the GM harness, which important note, if you take this out, try to hook your car up, wire it all up, it's not going to start because it is missing the body computer, which turns the key. It senses the key being turned on. It's the anti-theft. Now, if someone has HP tuners or as such for $50 credit from GM, you can unlock it and turn off the vehicle anti-theft system and allow that engine to start. So if a tuner charges you a hundred bucks, he's being charged 50 bucks for the credits to turn it off and 50 bucks for the labor to actually do it. Now removing the fan, usually you can leave the belt on, put a really big wrench and smack it on that nut right there but this one seems to be rusted and seized. So we removed those three bolts, those three bolts, and now the water pump is off and out of the way. Now, on to the next thing. Okay, now to take the alternator off, is just one plug, got a clip right there, pull it, and then you have one wire going down to the battery feed. Take the nut off, 
Put that back, because you'll want that later. And then you take the make it loose. Save them. Mm. She's stuck in there. Okay, since the alternator was stuck, we had to go get the extra arm. Oh yeah. Now she's out. Okay, back to the wiring harness. I forgot an important note. If you have the throttle body that's drive by wire, it actually doesn't have a cable connecting it to the gas pedal. Drive by wire, you also need to take this module off the firewall. And then you see the second wire that leads in goes in. You need the gas pedal off the floorboard. We'll show that in a little bit. Okay, now on the passenger side, there's the dipstick, but the dipstick goes through the manifold. So if you see right there, the tube going down, you can't get the manifold off till you take the dipstick out. Dipstick is held in one 15 millimeter bolt and an O-ring down in the oil pan, but you can twist it and get it out. Okay, all right, catch everybody up. My hands was a little greasy to grab a camera. Had to wait on the camera lady to get here. Uh, we took the power steering bracket off. It is four bolts on the front that are 15 millimeter. One on the back, it's 15 millimeter. Um, also, the motor mount bolts. There's three on each side. And they're in with GM thread locker that is unobtainium to come out. You need a big breaker bar. Um, also take the intake off. They come off with 10 bolts. They're eight millimeter bolts on both five of them down each side of the intake. I take the intake off so that I can get the bell housing bolts out. There are two of them right here in the back. You can't get to them from the bottom coming up. So I take the intake off so I can get my hands in there. The outer nut is 13 millimeter. That releases the fuel lines and the harness. And then the inner stud is a 15 millimeter. And now I'm working on the exhaust manifolds, which are 10 millimeter. And there is six of them. Now, most of the time, the one in the back will break off. I have no idea why the ones in the back broke off, but they're usually snapped off in the head. And GM puts thread locker on these two. see there's six of them on each side each manifold comes off and then once you get the two bell housing bolts out on this side two bell housing bolts on that side then we'll take the torque converter bolts out there's three of those and the motor will come up out of it and we'll get the rest of the wiring harness the wiring harness for the o2 sensors you have to get from underneath on each side we're saving the wiring harness if you weren't saving the wiring harness you just snip it, yank it out, but we're gonna save the wiring harness to use with the GM computer. So we'll catch you up after we get under the vehicle. Okay, so we're continuing underneath the meth lab Tahoe. Um, the hard part about this is 
the O2 sensors were plugged in at the factory when the body wasn't on it. So you actually have to get up by the transmission and I usually break off the little plastic clips that are holding them to the body. It's the easiest way to get it out. Like I say, if you're not trying to save the harness, just cut these and go on. But there's one on the other side. We gotta get over there and get that too. And we'll have to come back. We'll have to get two bell housing bolts there. And then there is two on each side. And then we're gonna have to remove the starter on this side. So we Okay, when you take the manifold off, it gives you access to the starter so you can take off the actual solenoid wire, which is an eight millimeter nut. And then you can take off the battery cable, which is a 15 millimeter. Once you get those off, then we can drop the starter out the bottom and then access the bolts holding the torque converter to the flywheel. And here you can clearly see the three motor mount bolts we took out earlier. With the manifold out of the way, it's much easier to get to those. Okay, so once you get the starter out, this little 10 millimeter bolt here holding the dust cover, you take it out. And then you have access to the flywheel bolts right there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to rotate the crank a little bit, but we can get to it. All right, that'll be the next step. Your bolt holding it there. And then there's a couple clips on this side. Like I say, if you're not trying to preserve the wiring harness like I am, just cut this and go. But we're trying to save the wiring harness and you see the rest of it's laid up on the windshield out of the way. And then you have the wiring harness that goes back to the transmission. Now that the transmission's dropped down and give you a little more room, I'll get under there and we'll be able to disconnect that a lot easier with the transmission hanging. All right, hang on. Okay. We got her out of there. The wiring nightmare is still in the meth lab, but we'll get that out in a minute. I wanted to go over a few things on the engine that I just couldn't do with greasy hands. Uh, we took the coil packs off. They're held on each valve cover. They have five bolts, 10 millimeter studs that hold each side on. Back here is your six bell housing bolts. Go around. Most of these are studs that are holding brackets and accessories on the back, like the fuel lines, wiring, the vent lines for the transmission and transfer case. Uh, they'll have the 13 millimeter nut, take that off a stud, and then the stud itself is a 15 millimeter wrench. Um, what you have here in the back is you have your cam sensor, oil pressure sensor, and then I'm not sure what somebody did to the knock sensors. Um, not sure what somebody's idea was there, but evidently a mouse was living under the intake too. He was having a party in here. Um, we'll go around this side. This is your low oil level sensor, which is a really cool feature to have. Um, I have it in my 57. It kicks a light on if it uh, ever reaches low level. And then you have the crank sensor which can be a 24 tooth or a 58. Um, it actually senses the crank where it's at in its revolution, and then it compares that to the cam so that it actually knows the timing that the motor's in. Okay, on the front here, we took off the air conditioner bracket, air conditioning compressor. Now they make these in two different styles, depending on the years. Um, actually, the cars probably have more than two styles, but the trucks have two styles. One, these ports are the same size, and then this one you see one smaller than the other. So if you're going for a replacement, make sure you know which one you're getting. And then on the front, you have your vent tubes, 
And from the factory, you can see in the back, they're just capped off. But on the front, these actually come up, go through the throttle body, and then come back over to the radiator to bleed any air out of the engine. I'm sure once you fill the engine up, air bleeds out one time, I'm sure that's good enough. All right, so next thing is get the wiring harness out of that mess. All right, stay tuned. Okay, so here is the spaghetti mess of wiring that we took so much pain and effort to get out. Now, if we weren't trying to save this, yeah, it probably would have cut about four hours off the job. But yeah, that's what a harness looks like, all laid out on the floor. Okay, hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. And yes, the LS is already sold, waiting on somebody to come pick it up. And as always, thank you, Lord. Thank you for today.